Hello everyone, yes it's us here at Who's Views and this one is Visitations and look who's here, yay! <laughs> Bedweer is here to tell us all about his latest jaunt to the BFI for the Celestial Toymaker, aren't you? I am indeed, I am indeed. How I are you anyway, you're all right? Here. Yeah. Hey? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing all about this because um, you were messaging me and what I've been telling us all about this. So you were there to see the animated version of the Celestial Toymaker. Now, we think this is the cover for this, Who Viewers. This hasn't yet been acknowledged uh, or released properly, but this is the one that appeared on a certain um, <laughs> a website and then disappeared. Uh, it's this one. So we think this is the cover with the wrong TARDIS there as well, by the way. That's based on the, the, the Eccleston one, isn't it? But that's what we think it is. So you were there, you've seen it, and we all want to know now all about this at the BFI. How was it? I mean, it was it was a good event. It was much shorter than usual. Um, when you compare it to oh, the really? six episodes of The Sea Devils, that felt like a long, <laughs> long day. Um, so we had a relatively short, you know, four episodes. We were limited with guests. Um, we'll talk about who was there uh, a bit later on. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I had a hell of a job getting up there because there was um, heavy snow around uh, southwest of England that <laughs> caused issues. Oh, really? Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Just just for like uh, about a 15, 20 mile stretch of the of the M4 motorway, um, but managed to get to London safely and. Yeah, it was it was a relatively swift event, unlike others, as I say. Um, but I was really keen to see what this new animation was like because <laughs> since it was announced, you know, we've all seen uh, some of the pictures, and I wanted to see how uh, how good or not it was. Well, that's going to be interesting because if you haven't seen some of the pictures, we're going to be showing them as part of this show. So, uh, hello to everybody that's watching us. Nice to see you all. It's nice to see you all in, in the comments there and starting to chat away as well. So lovely to see you. If you've got any questions for Bidweer as well, um, <laughs> from from what he's saying ab about this, then please do um, ask your question. I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll he'll do his best to answer them. So it's great to see everybody going getting in there. There's our Paul there as well. Just Jordan's in there. Blue Captain Jack's in there. Pete's in there. Uh, uh, Kirsty and Garbage, hello to you too as well. Thank you as ever for get, being in there. Lex Kane's in there. So yes, thank you very much everybody for joining us. So let's have a look at this then. So yeah, this was um, the BFI. You took some yeah. pictures for us as well. So you've got the Celestial Toy Maker there as we're saying, as we're talking about. And you're right, isn't it? Because when we did see some of the original um, stills, if you like, from this animation, I mean, I still think it looks a bit dodgy. So let's have a we, let's have a look at some of the, the slides we, we were given, shall we, back then? So we've got this. This is the Celestial Toy Maker himself. Um, yes. Um, yes. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean they, they haven't they haven't changed uh, the costume, which you thought you know they might because of the um, occidental. I'm glad they haven't. Kind of uh, kind of undertones that that brings up, um, but you know it's still. Uh, meant to be Michael Goff, at least. Whether it actually looks what? like Michael what? Goff, what? What? Yeah. really? <laughs> it's meant, yeah. The the Hartnell's interesting as well. It doesn't. Oh, you mean this one? Yeah. <laughs> it's clearly uh, a version of the first Doctor. But I tell you something. I tell you something though, Bedria. The, the the robot's good. The robot is good. The robot is really good, and uh, so is the TARDIS console. The TARDIS console is looking so incomplete, but nice. I mean, oh, I mean, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, is it actually a cartoon? Sorry, animation, or is it? Are they puppets? Because to me, they remind me of puppets. Mm. So, uh, my understanding is the way it's been put together is using the same. Um, motion capture technology that they used for that very unsuccessful Web of Th Fear Part 3 release that was on that special edition that everyone 
quite rightly ridiculed for being akin to first generation PlayStation games. Um, it, it's clearly come on quite a lot since then, and the technology works a lot better this time around. Uh, the movements of the characters are smoother, and um, it's just the likenesses where it falls down. Really. And just the likenesses. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Dodo in particular looks very doll like. And I can right. kind of give it a pass for that because it's the Celestial Toy Maker and because it's a bit more fantastical than other stories before or really since. Um, so I, I can kind of give it some leeway with with not getting exact likenesses and you know being characterizations of the first doctor, shall we say? Uh, because it still worked. Um, but you know, we'll talk about other characters a bit later on that have had a, a bit of a change. Um, oh, right, yes, well, less effective. Okay, well, yeah, we certainly want to do that because um, I don't understand because I, I heard that I heard I had heard the rumors yesterday and today. He says um, that they had altered aspects of the story, so that must be it. That must be what we're talking about. So, um, hello, everybody in the chat. Let's have a look. Blue Captain Jack is saying it looks like Boris Karloff. <laughs> Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Pete's saying to us, my God, sorry, it looks awful. Daryl, hello, Daryl, looks like it was done in 1985. <laughs> Actually, if it was done in 1985, it might have been done properly because we were that cost growth hole around there, Daryl, wouldn't we? You know, that stuff was really, really good, as we know, through Danger Mouse. Just Jordan, hello to you. Am I the only one who thinks it looks creepy and not really accurate? Kirsty says, no, you're not alone, Jordan. <laughs> Um, hello to Matt, the silent wee music king. He's here with us as well. Oh, and Lex is making the point that I sort of thought as well. It looks like a Jerry Anderson product. I was thinking more of these things I used to get, like Larry Lamb and Trumpton when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Lex Kane, I don't know if you know anything about that. Digby's joining us, Bedwia, saying hello to us both and hey, everybody nice. in the chat, which is lovely. And Garbage is saying to us, watching the story, I can ignore bad animation, bad drawings, bad sets, bad CGI, but that just looks weird. Okay. Um, and faces seem to be the difficulty, says Pete. Who did this? Company-wise, I bet it's cheap. It was an Australian company, wasn't it? Yeah, so I think it's... I, I don't know what the company name is, but it's the one connected with Big Finish Creative. It's their Australian-based um, uh, animation house, you know, what, whatever setup they've got down there. Um, and I'll say, I mean, it was largely finished the version that we saw on saturday um marquez who was uh basically the only one in attendance guest wise yeah. um admitted that he'd only had it delivered or he only had episode one delivered to him at quarter past six on the friday evening the night before the night before what um yeah that so they were still working on it up until friday now i don't I, wow. it, it, I mean, it's a bit. It was a, a bit of a random kind of event, to be honest, because it came, you know, less than four weeks after the last time we were in the BFI South Bank for the season fifteen box set and Horror Fan Rock, which was wonderful. Yeah. Um, but we haven't even had that release yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know whether it was just the availability of NFT One and the BFI uh, to put on this screening um maybe that this was the only slot that was available but we haven't even had you know the the release date formally announced we haven't had the cover art announced um so they were really trying to get this you know this material screened and mark has explained that uh he'd you know put the two pieces of the audio and the pictures that he'd been sent together and there was a fault on it and it didn't work and so he had to create a patch file which was a version, uh, an earlier version of episode one that he'd already had, oh coupled God. with coupled with his audio, um, and that's why there's there's one particular shot during the version of episode one that we saw that had not final in massive letters across the bottom of the screen. So there'll be further tweaks to. <laughs> to, to the episode. Goodness me. So it sounds like they are really, really behind with this. That's probably explaining why they haven't released the full covers or anything yet, you know, just in just in case. Maybe, maybe. 
Um, it is a bit odd because they haven't, yeah. as I say, announced a release date. So I don't know no. what date they're working to. And this has been well, it must have been Saturday <laughs> rushed through to, to get the screening done. Yeah, um, but they're still they, they were working on it right up until well. <laughs> Near, Friday night, near, Saturday, near, Saturday morning. The morning of, yeah. Mr. Ayres may have been up all night just to try and get something ready for you guys to come and watch because the tickets have all been bought and paid for, as it were. Uh, Blue yeah, Captain yeah. Jack is saying that is not Hartnell. They should wait until there's either the money or the tech because it looks terrible. And our Paul himself is saying, can they just try and recreate the episode? And that's tying in with some of the, the changes we were hinting at there. So we yeah. can look at that. And Doug is with us to say, um, I'm reluctant to say this. There's lots of work, blood, sweat and tears goes into these productions but it doesn't do it for me yeah i have to say I, i'm the same with that and it is the pictures that have put me off i have i have to say you know because they just look i can understand with the celestial toy maker um them actually going a little bit broader i mean look at this here now this is the um what's this this is the hopscotch game isn't it apparently yeah so, yeah so, so this, this is from episode four which we do have so we can make a direct comparison Yes. And of course, the limits of a 60s television studio. I still enjoy that particular episode. I still it's it's OK. It's good. This looks quite interesting because they've built on it. Hmm. But you are dealing with the fact that we as fans want to see these beautiful, classic episodes of British television of Doctor Who the way they were supposed to be. Because when you move on to this, what's this? Yeah, so so this is episode one, which is very different, and it and and this is actually a good a good still to use because it encompasses quite a lot of different things uh, that they that they have tweaked. So okay. so Joey the clown in particular is one character that is a bit different from uh, the original, should we say? Um, he's now about seven feet tall. And is skinny and is that him there? Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's Joey. Joey. Yeah. Oh, um, who who, and... who, would have, who would have known that, guys? Who would have known that? Yeah. Um, and then on the right hand side, you can see Dodo sitting in a little clown car, which is now the booth. So the game booth that um, Clara and Dodo are in, giving the instructions to Joey and Stephen during the game of Blind Man's Buff. Uh, now takes place in a little clown car just to make it more visually interesting. And you can also see from that that the route that they take is now not uh, two-dimensional on a studio floor. It, it's now been kind of more three-dimensional. And, and you know, they start by swinging on a rope that comes around and comes sort of towards the camera to the left. Oh, it's, it's, it, it's a bit weird to understand to be honest, because they've tried to make it more visually interesting, it actually makes it a bit more visually confusing, that game in particular. This 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 sounds to me like it's more of the interference for being, um, for the sake of what they possibly would call artistic integrity, you know, uh, you know, because we've had various animations in the past adding little things that they think yeah. are clever because they nod to things we know happens 50 years later. I don't like that sort of stuff. I don't know about everybody in the chat. Let me know. I don't like interference. I'd, I'd like to see it as it was supposed to be, as it was shot, as it was done back in the 60s. I don't want any, all these other nods. So what, what are the, the, they've done here is they've basically embellished and altered the story to make it look... Why? Why? What's your opinion? I mean, you've seen it. Why? Why do that? Does it? Does it enhance the story? Does it take away from the story? It, what, I mean, you, you mentioned that it was confusing. I don't. I don't understand what's what's yeah, happening here. No, so, so the story itself hasn't changed. You know, the 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 plot is still remains as it was. It's you know, we obviously had a review uh, episode where we talked about you know some of the issues that are within the the plot and how it you know could go on for infinity. Um, you know, just given. Toto and Stephen more and more games. Um, but, you know, that sort of element hasn't really changed. What they've done is to try and be a bit more creative, a bit more uh, out there, and to make it a bit more interesting. And overall, I'm fine with that because it's the Celestial Toymaker. It's it's a bit more fantastical than other stories and other episodes. I don't think you could do it with something like the Smugglers or the Myth Makers. I don't think that sort of stuff works. Um releases that we've had so far things like fury from the deep and galaxy four where the sets have just been massive mm. uh, no and you know again that tardis hopscotch 
that does have an element of peril added because it looks like you're going to fall to infinity, you know, rather than just drop half a foot to the studio floor. Yeah. So that so those little bits I don't mind. The 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 things that they've tried to do. So uh, in the same way that the toy maker appeared, you know, as a sort of massive looming presence um, over. David Tennant and uh, Catherine Tate in uh, the so-called special. Um, yeah. You know, those sort of elements have been brought in. So this idea that, you know, the toy maker it can, is more than just a guy sat in the chair taunting Hartnell. There's there's more elements to him. And they've tried to do uh, more stuff to make it more visually interesting, not just um, because they're not catering now for fans who... As you say, we'd quite like a representation of what was on screen, but to these creatives, that would be quite dull visually because it's just in a studio. So they've tried to do stuff that's more creative and more out there, and they've tried to make it more surreal and uh, a bit creepier and add all these elements to hopefully bring a no new audience to this. Oh, you see, I, I was wondering when the new audience, this mythical new audience was going to come into it. I w I'd like to say to these creatives as well, it's not your mythical new audience that's going to necessarily buy these things. It's us, yeah. the original Doctor Who fans who like classic Doctor Who. And it's like that bastardization of the Daleks we got, isn't it? The colored version where they completely ruined it for this mythical new audience. Well, actually, see us the ones that have been supporting it for 30 40 50 60 years we'd like to have as much as we can uh, from proper doctor who that looks like proper doctor who so why not do the two versions stop stop pandering to this stuff it really gets on my nerves because it's alienating all of us and we're the ones that want this and i saw one comment on facebook today bedwear which made me laugh which was some um uh, which was a fan saying why, he was actually there and he was saying why why they're just doing this i don't know what let's just hurry up and find the original episodes so we can all be happy <laughs> <laughs> which would be ideal really yeah. wouldn't it that would be lovely but it, it is it is it is all about that it's all about this oh we've got to make it accessible to the new audience well we haven't seen it either so how about making it accessible to us as well oh, and keep the, it classic the, the problem you have is that this screening wasn't a sellout there were plenty right. of empty seats that you could you could have bought tickets on the day. When you compare that to the season fifteen collection, that sold out in minutes. That didn't even go on general sale. You know those tickets are were like gold dust. You know because that's okay. The episodes spruced up. Horror Fang Rock had additional CGI and and all that sort of stuff. But it was classic Doctor Who, as they like to call it. Um, presented mm. on a big screen, maybe, you know, as I say, cleaned up and maybe some new effects, but the, the core is still the same. This is a, a new interpretation of an old story for animation and has been, um, as I say, you know, I, I can only assume that the logic is to try and bring in a new audience to, to <sighs> visit that particular story, but they weren't in the BFI because there were empty seats. So, well, I, I Exactly. And maybe, maybe, which is a shame, but it could also be because the animations are now alienating us as original fans as well. I mean, you know, I can't be the only one that thinks not only have they told us that any new stuff isn't for all of us, but they're now saying our original stuff that we all bought for, paid for, cared for, loved for, grew up with is no longer for us either. Blue Captain Jack is telling us, uh, there's no new audience. Um, and we talk about that often on the show, haven't we? There isn't really, which is why I think these original shows should be kept as honest as possible and given to us and sold to us because I think all the original fans, would, we, we want it to fill the, 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 the spaces in the shelves, let's face it. We, we, we also want to see the story. Just Jordan is saying to us, I don't mind the creative side of things, but you have to get the rest right first, surely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do have a problem, just Jordan, obviously, as I'm saying here, with some creativity. I don't like amendments to it. I don't like things like, oh, we can do this now, um, or that's going to nod to something that happens in a, in, a, in a Matt Smith episode. And I certainly don't like the interference for political reasons, like it was shocking that they didn't cast these sort of actors and stuff. This is where the animations fall down to me. Um, 
it, Peter's saying, but the animation sold, so why mess with them? They did originally, but I think I think the sales may have dropped for them slightly. And Paul is saying to us, the bizarre thing about changing the characters, all the actors doubled or tripled up the characters, clowns, yeah. soldiers, books. Yeah, that's an excellent point, isn't it? Because so, they did. Yeah, I, I'm a massive uh, fan of Carmen Silvera. Uh, yeah. Le loved her in Hello, Hello. Um, but I remember seeing her uh, in Panto in Cardiff years and years ago and, and getting her autograph at, at the stage door and, and all that sort of stuff. You wouldn't, it's not Carmen Silvera. The characters that, you know, she portrayed in uh, Celestial Toymaker are not represented in this version. So Clara the Clown, we, we saw a picture oh. of Joey. So Clara um, is a tiny clown that kind of um, sits on Joey's shoulder, basically. Um, and she's more uh, ragdollish. There's lots of lovely textures. Um Mrs. Wiggs in oh, was it episode three um, is like a, a, a I saw someone describe it over the weekend as a tea cozy because it's that sort of those sorts of textures. It's just like a knitted. Oh, I see. Right. OK. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's that's nice and that's creative, but it's not reflective of Carmen Silvera, who actually, you know, has voiced this character. So, you know, and who produced I, the character as well. Several characters, in fact. Yeah, exactly. And it's a bit disrespectful for me. I I I'm not really, you know, if I'm, you know, the estate of Carmen Silvera, I'd be a bit miffed to mm. put it bluntly, because because that isn't Carmen Silvera. Um I didn't mind so much so the um the King and Queen of Hearts, which, you know, again, Carmen Silvera is the Queen of Hearts. Yeah. Uh and that's done in a ver in a origami style you know, kind of folded, uh, you know, the cards folded. There's a bit more, they're a bit more two-dimensional in terms of their character because they're playing cards and that makes, it's not, uh, I, I thought they would go, you know, Disney Alice in Wonderland style, just a big talking card, but you know, they've done a bit more than that, fortunately. Um, so that doesn't work too badly, but again, it's not reflective of Carmen Silvera and that's, it's not reflective of the original episodes, really. I mean, just because you can do things, it doesn't mean that you should. And it is disrespectful for my eyes to recreate these whole episodes just because you can. Um, again, for this imaginary new audience. it would. It, I mean, lots of the guys in the chat are saying there are better amateur ones available on the Tube of Who. There are, aren't there? And we've seen them and we've praised an awful lot of them as well. Um, yeah. So it's such a shame that they didn't either employ them to do it or they didn't go along the same sort of guidelines by keeping the figures and the actors and the images of the actors that we know. It, so, it, it's very bizarre. Yeah, the, the version of um, Toymaker that uh, Dino Puff shared on YouTube mm. um, was incredibly impressive and quite rightly so got a lot of attention. And the thing it conveyed to me was particularly... Um, the moment where Joey realizes he's going to fall off, he's going to lose, and you know yeah. there are tears, and that's really yeah. haunting and dramatic. None of that in this. There's 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 a you know there's a nervousness about you know because they know uh, you know the gig is up and uh, you know and all this sort of thing, but it's nowhere near as effective as the stuff that Dinopuff did, which was really okay. haunting and stuck with me still. Um, it's not it's not at that level. It's but you know that, that, it's, that's a big part of that character though. Yeah, yeah, and it and it's try you know it, it, in that respect it fails to get across the idea that you know these are uh, whether well, human beings or not you know uh, whatever but they're they're, they're no. real people that have um, fallen into a trap with the toy maker and you know this is their opportunity to escape and by losing they know that they're stuck. Um, and that doesn't really come across as well as it could do. It's it's a shame. It, it seems to me, from what you're saying, that they've missed certain elements of the horror 
and the emotion of this incredible uh, four-part story from Brian Hales. Uh, let's have a look, see what they're saying in the chat. But we're, the web of fear stopped me, says Pete. That third episode just jarred with the rest of the story. That's when I started questioning further purchases. Yeah, and God, that was really to bad. A... I can't believe that even got released, to be honest. No, I, so I, 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 well, yeah, you know, you all know my opinion on that. This, to me, looks like, uh, says Garbage, let's create anything because they will buy it. How many times have we said that? And how many times do we get the feeling about that? Yeah, it carries on. Rather than creating a quality product that an unexpected audience will buy in addition to the original purchases, yep. And Daryl is saying to us, they might as well have just re-recorded it like they did with the Paul McGann Sharda if they wanted to do a completely new visual take. That's a good point. Uh, Doug, pretty soon AI will be reproducing lost episodes that will be indistinguishable from the originals. Ooh, scary times there, Doug. And it's feeling very churned out, though, says Just Jordan. Oh, wow. Even though they're delayed with it, yes. Paul, um, please respect the source material. Big message to these creatives. Just because you're creative and you can do stuff, maybe think about the fact we don't want it. We would like to see these valuable episodes of ours that were as near to their broadcast original quality as we can and as you possibly can. So maybe knock it off with the pretentiousness, maybe. Culture Pop with B-Hop. Lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the channel. Thanks and hello to you all too. Lovely to see you. Um, Pete's scaring me now because he's saying, I wonder when they may try the Dalit master plan. They'll really mess up a classic going down this road. Let's not even go down there, shall we? Um, well, I mean, in you know, the most recent Dalek story they did, Evil of the Daleks, was superb. But it wasn't done using this technique that they've used on Toymaker. Not yeah. to the extent, anyway. Um, a couple of questions for you here. Tardis Travels wants to know, I understand there was a reference edited out because it wasn't PC. Uh, well, the, um, shall we say, the difficult uh, dialogue from the eeny, meeny, miny, mo rhyme has has been removed and will never appear on a BBC release. If you've got the BBC audios from the old BBC radio collection, hang on to it, people, because they'll try and edit it out of that as well. Yeah, if you haven't if got, got it, go and find it quick. Yeah, if you've got that version, you can, yeah, you can make it out. But I can't um, stand it. It was, it was of its day. And it should be left in there because it's historically as it was on that day. But yet again, they're making a decision on our behalf, aren't they, everybody? And it really gets on my wick. I'm not going to I'm not going to apologize for it either. So if you haven't got the BBC Radio Collection up there, if you haven't got those, get onto eBay or get onto somewhere, go and find it and get it quick before they recall it or edit it. Because maybe they haven't twigged to that yet. Unbelievable. Why can't they just put on the warning like they do on those stupid shows now, you know? You know, it may offend you if you're in a minority or something. I don't know. Another question for you as well from Pete. Have they animated all four episodes or just the three? Yeah, all four episodes have been animated. So, uh, yeah, we, we've seen the, you know, Tyus Hopscotch uh, still. Um, so we've got that direct comparison to uh, the final test. Um, it's interesting to make that comparison, shall we say? Um Again, oh, I, don't, really? I don't see the logic of going to the effort to animate something that's already in existence. But again, it's this mythical new audience that if they've watched three episodes in animated form, they don't expect to go and watch a real life version because it's going to be too jarring. So they animate that as well. You know. I just really it's, feel I, that um, if, they, if they're going to go after this mythical new audience, the, the, again, they're excluding us. And these are the people that are all about inclusion and all this nonsense, isn't it? But, but they're not bothered about us. Thanks it, for that. It was, it was the same with the underwater menace. You know, we've got half yeah. of that. We've got, you know, two out of the four. Why, why are you not just animating the two episodes that are missing to a good standard? Yeah. And yeah. And put them together because we would buy that. We, we wouldn't we? We would buy. I'm, sh I'm sure I'm speaking for all of us. Correct me if I'm wrong in the channel. But, you know, if they released the Celestial Toymaker, for example, with the one episode we've got left with the surrounding ones in animation, a good, decent animation, we'd buy it, wouldn't we? And we probably would spend the $14.99 on a DVD or the $19.99 on a Blu-ray or something just for that. So that we've got it. Continue. That's what they used to start to do. They did it with the invasion. And suddenly all these pretentious creative types have got their grubby little protrubances on it and taking it all over the shop. It's very, yeah. very bizarre. 
I mean, I'm like, you know, we've got uh, the moon base, which I think is wonderful. You know, two episodes of that animated alongside, you know, the normal episodes, as you say, the invasion, the ice warriors is another one, a couple of episodes missing in that. And it just fits in alongside the, you know, the episodes that we do have. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I don't know whether it's about marketing or, or whatever, but it's just, yeah, I don't, I don't see the value, you know, in going to the effort to animate a whole episode that already exists. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm with you there as well, and I think they're missing that opportunity actually just to just to do additional rather than recreating the whole thing in their image and what they expect, and then give it to us. This could be this could be a, a poor seller for them, and I've got no sympathy if this is the case. Uh, Pete's adding to what he said there. He's got the audio, and it's his. Correct. They can't take it away from you once you've bought it and you've got it in your hands. They can't take it away from you. That's why I never rely on the online stuff, <laughs> the download stuff. Always get the physical copy. Tardis Travels is also saying I had a rough audio copy of it, which I kept. Um, yeah, Neville. Hello, Neville. Uh, the invasion will always be the gold standard for Doctor Who animation, as far as I'm concerned. Here, here, I'm with you on that one. It's still one of my favourite stories to this day. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd say. Peter's also saying, yes, just uh, do it like we they did with just the Tenth Planet. Planet. Yeah. yeah, and also just Jordan pointing out, like they did with Tom Baker's Sharda. Yeah. Well, again, um, why, why bother with Sharda generally? But that's a different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the uh, the most. What did we say when we were reviewing the most uh, the unfinished story that's been finished more times than any other Doctor Who story? Yeah. There we go. Culture yeah. Pop uh, with B Hop is saying they treat us like we haven't spent the money that we have. Uh, mm. Yeah, that's that's a point that we talk about an awful lot on this show. Also saying the new animation style looks like Clone Wars, uh, the Star Wars Clone Wars. Okay. I, sort of, yeah. I sort yeah. of understand where you're coming from with that. I I sort, of, sort of get it. I mm. still don't think that looks like William Hartnell, though. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, no. Mm, 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 mm. And I that mean, certainly it, doesn't look like Peter Purvis, unless it was a very bad day. I mean, I didn't know he was had such a strong jaw. Uh, <laughs> Peter Purvis. Well, yeah, look at that. Goodness me. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could chip chips with that, couldn't you? Goodness <laughs> me. Uh, yeah, listen, thank you. You're watching um, visitations from here, Oze, whose views we are talking to Bedwir about his trip to the BFI at the weekend to look at the still not quite finished version of the uh, animated version of the Celestial Toymaker, which is apparently on its way to the shelves and the stores very, very soon. Um, yeah. How? Maybe. What, what, yeah, what you get? Well, I was going to say what you're all thinking about it but we can tell from your comments coming through here. Tardis Travels is also saying that I'd rather have the, and prefer the telly snaps. Happy, happy days for many of us there, eh? Those yes, things. I, I think, uh, well, I, I imagine there will still be a reconstructed uh, version available on these releases that are the telly snaps alongside the audio. Um, some of those have been of... Uh, Varying quality, should we say, because they've um, added some animated bits in alongside some of the most recent ones. Um, but that's always an option, and fortunately, we do still have episode four to watch as yeah. as intended. Yeah. Absolutely, um, and the thing the thing about this as well, if you've got the audio, if you can get the audio, that's that's the the way possibly to look at this. You know who who it's it's up to you. It's up to you, isn't it? It's there if you want it. If you don't want it, but as uh, as we're saying there, who knows when another version of these things might come out? Who knows indeed? So listen, the reaction to this over um, yesterday, especially Sunday, as well as today, from fans that were there, was very mixed. Did that come across at the BFI as well? Were there some people who were going, hmm, "Wasn't say anything." Well, I think it's the British thing of all being very polite, and when when the episode's finished, you you, you know you give it a round of applause because you don't know who's in the audience. And and in fairness, you know, as I said, Mark Ayres was there. He's done a great job, you know, using. Uh, well, he explained that this was the first opportunity to use um, material from the Randolph tapes. Yeah. So so this was a relatively recent uh, discovery of audio recording. Did he find them, Bedwia? No, someone uh, someone found it. Uh, at a refuge, a uh, refuse, sorry, uh, a refuse uh, site, um, took it home. Uh, it then went via kaleidoscope and ended up with Mark Ayres. Um, and uh, it's, it's a so 
typically these audios have been put together with uh graham strong um he had uh, a particular method of wiring a microphone and his recording equipment into the television incredibly He's dangerous so about. clever isn't he but he got <laughs> really high quality recordings and that's what is wow. used for the bulk of this uh well bulk of all these releases however he didn't really like this story so he didn't keep it and oh. taped, taped over it so yeah, we've had okay. some um <laughs> audios of variable quality should we say mm. for the celestial toy room and uh the following story the you know, following episodes um so finally being able to use the randolph tapes which are of a better quality which probably used a, a similar technique as graham strong used um wow. so it, it was a very you know in terms of audio when you're you know in a cinema screen so it's uh it's a it's a very good sound system that they use in the bfi of course, um, the audio yeah. was, was was excellent and you know marquez has obviously added uh little effects and try to give some background noise to particular you know each particular area and that sort of thing to kind of lift it from that um that empty 60s studio feel that uh you wouldn't have noticed at the time really because no you wouldn't have no you know as as he as he said on on the day on um you, you you'd be watching it and there'd be some you know, someone cooking tea or you know vehicles going outside the window and and you wouldn't really hear that, that silence of but also uh, the way tv was made back then i mean this lasted into the 80s we didn't have a continuous soundtrack on some on stuff like wow. some of the some of the, the the shows today i've noticed do there's constant mm-hmm. uh effects of some sort of soundtrack behind them constantly now through this i find that quite distracting because i need to hear the words and even sometimes as well i can't hear the dialogue from the actors for whatever reason why do they all intend on whispering these days because i'm like what hello excuse me you know but uh yeah it was just the way it was made back then and again it, it's adding something and it, 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 we'd have to listen to it to understand whether we like it or not but i don't mind looking at those episodes there's plenty of them isn't there from the 60s and 70s everybody where the studio noise is is, is there you know that and you just i, I th- maybe maybe it's my, my age maybe sorry you get on with it you just no, you just ignore I mean, it you know when i've worked in the bbc I, I remember i spent one morning with with um you know, sort of foley artists and, and sound mixers. Mm. Um, and, and they are sitting there, you know, if you've got a scene in a pub, you've got to have background music, you know, whatever, you know, uh, chart music you can use. You've got to have, you know, uh, well, I don't know if you still have gambling machines in, in, in pubs these days, but, you know, quiz machines I mean, as they are now probably. Yeah, quiz machines, um, yeah. Uh, you know, those sort of noises in the background and you've got to have, you know, distant sounds of vehicles and whatever you know to add you know as they see it life to 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 these scenes that make it more realistic rather than the dead silence of a of a studio uh, yes yeah a tv center or whatever so you know it's it's the an extension of that logic but you know the fact that they've incorporated a clown car as the booth for the blind man's buff game it, that's got to have an appropriate sound effect you know and the honking horn and, and all that sort of quirky noise but um yeah, yeah. Marquez has done a tremendous job. I think his work is incredible, given he's working with, you know, audio that's been recorded, you know, nearly sixty years ago, and is just on reel-to-reel tape. It's not, you know, although he's digitised it and has obviously cleaned it up as well as he can. You know, he's still working off these uh, recordings made by fans at, at the time, and you know, the only single screen in, so that was the only chance to yeah. do it. So. Yeah. And it's so long after the event yeah. now as well. Absolutely. So you can't, yeah. you know, you can't go and ask uh, the actors to go and can you just re-record this dialogue for us or no, or no, like that, you know, no, you can't so, do that. No. So you've got what you what you have. It's it's a shame when that is so uh, so close to original that it's so different from the visuals that yep. have been. Yep. Uh, changed for creative reasons it's a shame really that they're doing that as well because we've all been waiting for these stories and the demand they looked at animated simply to fill in the demand that we created and now it's got to a point where they don't care about that as as people are saying in the chat they're just churning them out now and they have taken the control to say we're not going to be as authentic and as um 
uh, as respectful to the source material as we can. We're going to take liberties with it. Uh, it doesn't sit with me. Peter's saying here as well, if the animation is not questioned at a public meeting, we'll keep getting the same crud. Money is tight and we need quality for our quid. Mm. Uh, the, well, the easiest way, actually, of course, is to say we're not happy with this, is to not buy it. Or to wait, as TARDIS Travel says, until the Blu-ray or the DVD prices come down. Um, so you can usually expect that to happen anywhere between seven or eight months to a year later, can't you? Um, and you can actually now see things like um, the Abominable Snowmen, the Power of the Daleks reissue, for around about seven ninety nine in certain stores. Yeah, you know, you can get yeah. them now for there. You know, you know the, you know, the, well, we can say HMV for example. You can get them there, and I noticed recently that um, Power of the Daleks was about eight ninety nine, I think, and the others were all seven ninety nine. They might come down further. You know, they, they might, might come down further. Yeah. Yeah, because if, if they've got the stock, they want to get rid of it. But the point is, people, you know, we know people like Paul, for example, who can't wait that he needs it straight away. And there are plenty of fans like that. So they are actually letting down, I think they're letting down part of um, part of the audience there. You know, yeah. so that's a real shame. You, you mentioned, you know, the colorized Daleks. You know, I, I haven't brought myself to buy it. And, and no. you know, there, there's, there's, why would you? It's not for you. It. I love I love the steel books and it, you know that is actually a gorgeous thing and they actually had it in the BFI for quite a lot of money. Um, really? shall I say. Um, and I, there was no way I could justify buying it for a pretty thing to sit on the shelf because I won't watch it because I watched it on anniversary night uh, whenever it broadcast and really no. disliked it. It was awful. awful, yeah, because it was awful. And again, yeah. it, as I say, it wasn't for us. And they've missed out that huge market there because, you know, a lot of us will not buy that because it wasn't for us. It was hacked to death. Mm. It had the Benny Hill, the now famous Benny Hill moment in it. And it wasn't for us. And they're making the same mistake here with the animation. So they're actually, they're actually um, losing out on a lot of sales because a lot of us won't buy that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it's such a shame, isn't it? Because we want the stuff as properly as we can, but we want to be treated like grown-ups and not seven-year-olds who need to have what Larry Lamb or Mary Mungo and Midge or Captain Pugwash. It yeah. really, it really is odd. This is my worry because you know, obviously the DVD collection was going to come to an end when they ran out of episodes to put onto disc. <laughs> and if they they they've basically gone away from the idea that you know the reason they were doing animations was to release these stories so people could complete their collections that's all it was about they met that the demand it. we we created the demand and that's yeah. what it was about yeah and they wanted to continue the dvd range because it was a good seller for bbc studios yes huge and animation was the way of going about it yes. now however it, it's it's gone into this weird tangent where it's now about being creative and trying to get in a new audience to collect these uh, animated stories. You know, the uh, screenings on BBC America have fallen by the wayside. And, yeah. you know, it's not... It needs to go back to that core audience of people that wanted to complete their DVD collections. Absolutely. So make, a pro uh, make, make a product that's for those people. And yes. that want to enjoy these episodes as, you know, with a few tweaks here and there, you know, we're not... Not too uh, clever. Yeah, you know, not just, too clever. Stay respectful, but, but don't but add respectful. things. Exactly, is respectful yeah. of the the source material and is a is a good reflection of what those episodes would have been like on broadcast had we watched them originally. Like the invasion, basically yeah. the first one, which was the one that actually sort of got the BBC studios or worldwide as they were. Saying, oh look, there is an audience; they're going to buy this. But obviously, change of uh, staff in there and ideas and stuff and now they're going into all this pretentious nonsense so listen bbc studios if you are listening we don't want all this we want to fill the gaps on our shelves in our dvd collections as this one here is saying so can you please give it to them properly we are grown-ups we don't want to see all these silly cartoons that you're trying to do we don't want your pretentious nonsense we want it as close to the missing episodes as they possibly can love and kisses whose news Thank you very, very much. Yeah. <laughs> if, if they want to be creative and do new versions of the Celestial Toymaker. Do as an extra. Further, and go further and go out there and make it more um, surrealist and make it, you know, whatever. That's fine. But give us a version that 
you know, is faithful to the characters. Yes. That is, is re as, you know, reasonably <laughs> accurate to the actors that portrayed these characters. And, and that, you know, tells the story as it was, that isn't full of embellishments. Um, and then, you know, if you think there's a market for that massive creativity and new version, you know, cut it down into, you know, 90 minutes and, and, and do what sell you want it again. To. Yeah. Just sell it again. I mean, they, they seem to be, for people that are supposed to be in business, they're not thinking with a business head. Because if they're looking for profit and if they're looking for money coming in, there's two versions available here. You've got two audiences. You've got your precious new mythical brand new audience that the Daleks and Colour, for example, was aimed at. They will buy that, but you won't get the huge numbers. You would have got huge numbers if you'd done it properly and if you do any future ones properly where you're just colouring the episodes not tinkering with it and then selling it to all of us who would buy those episodes, you know? So you've got two audiences there. You've got to stop thinking of the Doctor Who audience as one big happy family. It's not anymore. And no. you created that and you've got to get on with it. But when it comes to DVDs, a lot of these kids that are coming along now won't even know what the DVD is because they wouldn't have the set. Whereas the majority of us have the set mm -hmm. and we want to complete it, but they're not, not going to happen when they look like this. And certainly not until they're around about 4 99 in my eyes. Let's see yeah. what the guys are saying in the chat bed. We're Neville's coming to say here, must admit, I found it very difficult to watch an animation when it was special and well done. It worked, but modern animation is unwatchable. Uh, I, I, you're being very kind there, Neville. We're calling it modern animation. I just call it tacky and lazy, but there you go. That's just me. And Doug, I bought the colorized Daleks out of curiosity. While I'm impressed with the work that went into it, I preferred the original. Is it sacrilege to say as a kid, I preferred the Peter Cushing movie? No, it's not. not. No, it's not. Uh, and thank you for that, Doug, because don't forget this month here on the channel, we're going to be celebrating the Peter Cushing movies. We've got four shows coming for you. So make sure if you're new to the channel, you've liked and subscribed, make sure you look out for them because they're coming very soon. I'm really excited about that. Big Daleks. Anyway, back to the Celestial Toy Maker. What else happened? You took some. You took some pictures for us um, at this screening, this event, um, and uh, you took that one there. You've taken this one as well. This is obviously the title sequence, which they've coloured in some sort of weird, hideous orange. Can I ask you as well? Do you think, from your point of view, before we start, you start telling us about the guests that arrived? Is this a broadcastable cartoon animation? Could it be shown? on telly i wouldn't i wouldn't again i, I question what the audience would be because realistically you'd put it on bbc4 and this isn't for a bbc4 audience because oh, of the style right. and it, it's not you know if people are interested in recreations of uh missing material via animation much like you know i watched the um animated dad's army episode recently and oh yeah a... that's nice animation though isn't it yeah, but that's you know that's just a shot of of you know the troops in in the church hall and or, as you would expect it, and it you know and that's nice. This is creative, bright, colourful, trying to be surreal and fantastical, and that wouldn't fit your BBC Four audience. Now it might it will put, it'll inevitably go on the iPlayer at some point, and there might be you know ten thousand people or whatever that that will check it out on there. But um, yeah, I'd, they would argue that you know, oh well, it's in high definition, so it's broadcast quality. But oh, yippee! <laughs> in terms of a product, I don't, I don't know who you'd be broadcasting it for. Um, well, that's interesting, isn't it? Who viewers? That is interesting because yes, you're right. It would go on BBC Four, but if it's not going to be there, where the public come along this and think, oh, this is very interesting. Oh, I'm not going to bother watching it. Kirsty's just actually said here as well and reminded me these animations are now in a very competitive market. And Doctor Who, for me, hasn't really stood the test of time for this. And it hasn't realized it's part of a competitive market. And Kirsty's saying, they've just killed the animation for X-Men 97, so I just roll my eyes at this. Because uh, there's all this other incredible animation you see coming out now from big studios and from smaller studios, like the uh, the fan-made versions of the of the Celestial uh, Toy uh, Maker here. It, it, it is very, very... They seem to be missing the trick here, don't they? They seem to be not thinking because they're too busy with their blooming pretentious arty farty creativity. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of the um, the Batman animated series, which was oh yeah, very much a nineties thing. Yeah, but you know that's been spruced up for DVD and Blu-ray release, and it's and it's 
tremendous it works really well and you know you buy that box set and it's full of features and commentaries and, and loads of stuff so though so those as you say studios whether it's you know warner brothers or whoever if they've got uh material that they can um spruce up in terms of old stock or whatever they can they can do quite a lot with it and yeah as you say doctor who's really missed the boat i suppose in terms of um in, as i say you know we've we've had this discussion before about how fandom is divided in, yeah. into you're either you know loving the new stuff and all, all for it and then you're either against it you mm. either one or the other you're for mm. it or you're against it and you fit one of those two and again and this release kind of falls in between that gap because it's not appealing to either really it's kind of leaning towards the newer audience that it thinks is for there but you know there were a handful of of uh younger audience members in 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 cosplay and all that sort of stuff you know in the bfi and that's you know great if they're if they're engaging with this fantastic yeah but they're not filling the auditorium no no so and then this isn't really appealing to us older fans who want to complete our dvd collections with you know decent representations of what those episodes were like so it it falls in that gap in between and doesn't you know cater for either audience and... so so th there's potentially no audience for this at all except for those of us that um those of us fans that will buy it simply so it sits on the shelf because i have to say how many of you in the chat i'm like this i'll get the animated eventually and it sits on the shelf and I've only watched one recently, haven't I, Bedwyr? Because we were, we were talking about it and I had to go and get it. Oh, it was the Abominable Snowman. And you said there was yeah. a lovely drone footage with Fraser in Wales. So I, I opened it there and then and I went and looked at it the day, you know, the, the, that, that night after we were chatting about it. But it sat on the shelf filling in a gap. That's it. Mm. And I thought I can't be bothered with the the cartoon part of it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, How many I, of you are doing that? I, I'm a big fan of the steel books in particular. I love I love steel books, you know. Um, yeah. Whether it's, whether it's movies, whether it's Doctor Who stuff, you know, I, I I love a good steel book. But I haven't pre-ordered this one because I don't know what it looks like. Cause yeah, we need to know what it looks like. Yeah, because it could be as tacky as the the the, the cover we showed oh. earlier. That could be the one. Lex is saying to us here, you would thought you would have thought it would have been in black and white rather than colour. Is no. it in both? There will be a black and white version. Um, available to watch uh again i bet they didn't like that <laughs> again if you're going to the effort of having a black and white version of it then surely it should be like the black and white version that we had originally well you would yeah, yeah. you know yeah. it's, it's going to be a black and white version of this really out there create you know creative surrealistic liberties taken version of the story so yeah. and you, yeah. you mentioned some of the younger fans the small number of younger fans that god loved them turned up for this thing on sunday genuinely obviously intent on seeing the, the, the story and wanting to be introduced to it yeah. but they've got to remember as well that these episodes we've not seen our age group have not seen them either because they've been missing since we all arrived as well you know so yeah. we haven't seen them and, and sadly you know those that did see them on original broadcast well, many of them aren't around now for whatever reason. I mean, obviously there's few, but you know what I'm saying. A lot of them won't be around now. Um, so it's a case of, you know, who is your audience, BBC Studios, these creative people producing it? You don't know. You don't know. Um, and that's a shame. That's a real shame. But these young people will go to this thing and think, oh, this was, this is, it's not, it's not the show that they should be looking at, is it? And then they'll go back to iPlay and they'll look at the the Time Meddler or something like that, oh, you know, and they'll go, yeah. oh, okay, how does it fit in? It's quite right. misleading for them, isn't it, really? It, 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 it is quite misleading. And, um, you know, we have this, this history of having read the novelizations and listened to the audio, you know, the BBC Radio Collection when that was released to try and immerse ourselves and try and get a feel for these missing episodes and uh, yeah. you know not not to be disparaging i'm sure some of the younger fans have done similar things as well but i hope so it's, it, you know and i would encourage them to do that because i think you get a fairer reflection from reading a novelization than you do from some of these animations because they are more interpretive than uh the, the stories were originally absolutely 
no, absolutely. Pete's saying to us, um, he watches his animations that he's bought. He has the Steelbook animations. Also, people may question future purchases of the collection series if the animation is crud. I know he will. I can't see that actually happening, Pete, really, because the, 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 the sales of the collection box sets are massive. And we would still buy the collections if they were incomplete because we know they're incomplete. It's, it's reality. There are episodes missing. End of story. So the, the animations are a nice sideline. I would argue they don't necessarily need to be in the collections unless they're an extra because they're that unpopular or they're not 100 percent you know what i'm saying pete so i would say i wouldn't yeah. worry at all about anything to do with the season box sets at so, all uh, we, we've now had a really interesting release in that we had season two which is quite a full season but it does have the couple of missing episodes from the crusade now they didn't go to the effort of animating those two episodes. I wonder why. And that makes sense because if you're going to do the Crusade, you'll release it as a DVD, as a single release, and uh, and then you'd put it on the collection. So that so they've kind of gone the wrong way around with this. Yeah, um, they have. Yeah, and maybe they're still crossing their fingers that. Um, Something, something will turn up, up. <laughs> um, and they'll only have to animate. I don't know. It's but once you get to season three, which this you know this story would fall into, that's going to be predominantly just animated episodes. It's the only way you can do it. And yet they're not that brilliant, and they're not that good. And people would have already had them on the DVD, the Blu-ray, and the Steel Book. So they're the ones that are going to have to come out practically at the last time, aren't they? To say, look, here's here's the, here's the covers for you. To finish off the look of your box sets yeah you know the, you know part of them will be thinking hang on a minute let's hope these things turn up or maybe this collector knows where that is or something we know what the rumor circuit's like as well let's get back to talking about who was there so we mentioned um that marquez came on you've mentioned what he was talking about but who's this person all right so these are our presenters so justin johnson ah, and right. dick Pitty, uh always there at these bfi events and um uh yeah, they're, they're, they're great value, great uh, um, presenters for, for this stuff. And and Dick Fiddy in particular has a uh, has an interest in um, archive media and older media. Um, mm -hmm. and, and Justin's, I think he's basically a Doctor Who fan. He was very enthusiastic yeah. about the opportunity to watch um, these animations and these new versions. And, you know, <clears throat> credit to the BFI. They do put on a really good uh, event and they're very grateful to... BBC Studios for allowing them the opportunity to to host these sorts of things and to project them onto you know their big their big screen and you know really showcase Doctor Who in in excellent quality and to to a very keen audience. So yeah, yeah, they're, they're one of the you know at a time where <clears throat> you know Doctor Who is debated, shall we say, um, the BFI in particular are a very strong voice in favour of old doctor you know the the older areas of of the show so um yeah the bfi are really strong uh supporters of as we call yeah. it class two well and so they should be because it's proper british television and it's it's historically yeah. important you know as fans we don't think that do we but it is uh, you know, Doctor Who from 63 to 89 is British history. I've said it before. You can actually see the industry changing within Doctor Who because the technology is there. The, the advances in working techniques is there. Direction styles is there. Production techniques are all. It's all script. Everything's in there. And you can catalog it. You can actually see how television is made through Doctor Who over those beautiful 26 years. You know, yeah. so you compare, you compare survival to where it started with uh, Unearthly Child in 63. And it's 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 just amazing stuff. That's, and that's why they should look after it. And that's why, you know, it's great to see the BFI coming through that. Um, Paul is saying to us here, uh, if the BBC want people to buy the animations, they need to make sure the product is good quality. Do they even really care though at this point? As long, Paul, I reckon personally, as long as the money's rolling in, I don't think they do. And sometimes well, I do think they're taking the pee out of us. The, these things are commissioned uh, based on a budget, and and one of the companies presenting them uh, a quote for we will deliver these four episodes for this amount of cash. Are you interested? And then they go and 
either do it. get it or you know do it or or don't um or they go and find a, a cheaper alternative and i think this development of the motion capture system is an attempt to try and do these animations for less money that's of course honest. it is yeah, uh, yeah. you know if, rather than animating frame after frame it, it's trying to speed up the process and uh and maybe that this is the technique which will allow them to do something like Marco Polo say. You know, <laughs> if if they do commission, uh, you know, if they announce Marco Polo as an animation that's coming up, you can expect that the season one box set is being prepared with that to fill the gap. Um, if, if they announce Marco Polo's coming up, I'll probably cry. Um, because I just don't want to see it ruined in any way. I mean, Marco Polo, for those people who are, who are tuning into this and are, are not Doctor Who fans, this is a mythical episode, a mythical story with magical episodes. We've got the audio, we've got the book, we know how it should look in our heads. You've got to get that one 100% right with the right animation. Otherwise, you will feel the full force of fandom. If you think the reaction to the Celestial Toymaker is bad, you mess up Marco Polo and you've had it basically, haven't you? Because we will come for you. It's yeah. as simple as that. <laughs> you will never live yeah. it down. Yeah. If they can use this motion capture system, as I say, to, to do it, great. But they've got to get the characterizations right. They've got to look like Mark Eden and oh, the they have got to. to look like Arnold. You know, you can't, yeah. you know, you, you can't do as you say, cartoon versions of Marco Polo. It's got to be. Uh, and if, yeah, as I say, if this system allows that to happen, great. But it's got to be really good quality. And it's good, you know, DMP, you know, Master Plan will be uh, another one which which needs to look like the characters. It's going to be, you know, Daleks are fairly easy to do, but you've got to have a character that looks like Mavic Chen. Although that's probably up for debate as to whether you can do Mavic Chen, I don't know. Um, uh, well, well, they probably won't think so because they'll be too busy thinking, oh, we can't show that now. Oh, we can't, you can't hear that now. Oh, we've got to change this. Oh, we've got to put that in there. Oh, the casting was wrong back there. I mean, we're seeing this coming through with the with the, uh, the with these animations as it is. It's, it's getting really, really tiring, actually, as well. Just, just bearing in mind that the public is not going to buy these things either. It's going to be the hardcore fans you're aiming at. You're aiming at us, all of us on here. We're part of that audience. We want it done properly and we don't get offended easily. Just show us what it was because we've heard it. We've read it. We know where it was produced and we're grown ups. We know the years it was produced. Just give us it as it should be. You know, yeah. that's it. You know, don't go messing with it. Can you imagine what they'll do with Marco Polo if they ever got around to that? Oh, my goodness. Paul saying Marco Polo is wonderful. Please don't spoil it. Absolutely. Um, uh, what else we I got? Mean, Paul, Paul is also seven doing... episodes are probably compressed down into into ten the... minutes. Yeah, uh, the BBC should do the right thing and front up some decent money. It's made them enough money over the past sixty years. The classics deserve the best treatment possible. The BBC wastes so much money. Yes, and we see that an awful lot, isn't it? Uh, Neville is saying to us, "Hang on, is the CT animation the same one I've seen clips of on uh, on YT? Well, if they look like this." then yes, this is what we're getting. This is the BBC Studios next Blu-ray uh, Blu DVD steelbook release um, in the um, animations range. So this is what it's going to look. This is what Bedwee is here to tell us all about. This is what he went to see on Saturday. And uh, as we know, it's not quite finished, but it is on the way. That's what you're going to get. So if that's what you saw, Neville... That's what you're getting exactly yep. as it is in those pictures. Um, uh, what else have we got here? With some footage. So if you've seen that bit, then yes. If you've seen some other animators do it, uh, no, sadly, that is not the version that they've gone with. Just Jordan is saying to us here, so it's like a tender as you would in business. That doesn't always work for the best. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, absolutely. And Doug is saying, well said, JT. Doctor is literally a time-traveling time capsule. Preserve and respect it. We're not seeing much of that, though, Doug, in my eyes, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, we're nearly at the end of you telling us what, what's happening here. There was one of the guests that you, you wanted to mention as well, wasn't there? You sent me a picture. So who is this? Yes. So uh, this is Emily Cook. Now, ah, um, right. it might be a name that uh, you're familiar with. Um, she's gone from uh, writing and assistant editing in Doctor Who magazine 
now works for Big Finish and uh. has been involved in a lot of um, of these sorts of uh, DVD productions. Um, I think she presents the Doctor Who Collectors series. I think we've only had one instalment of that so far um, from the for the sixties on the season two box set. Um, but anyway, so as part of the screening, BBC Studios very kindly shall we say, uh, mm-hmm. gave us the opportunity to watch 10 minutes of a new feature that's going to become a regular uh, occurrence on the collection box sets, with the exception of the first one, which is going to be on the Celestial Toymaker release. And this is um, this is a series where uh, Doctor Who alumni are going to compete to try and get out of a Doctor Who-themed escape room Inside oh. seventy minutes. Oh, this is the God's brainchild. Sake. How old do they think we are, for Christ's sake? Yeah. Why so don't these the people brain... grow up? I mean, I, I mean, so you're telling me they're taking eighty-year-olds into an escape room environment and letting them get out? So, yeah. So the version, the the the, the ten minutes that we saw was for the first Doctor and features Peter Purvis. Oh Christ! And Maureen O'Brien. Alongside uh, Lisa Barrowman, you know, of Survival Car Affair. Oh, one of the cats, yeah. With, you know, so a, a real definite connection with the 60s, obviously. Mm. Um, trying to get out of an escape room. And I'll oh, bless them. I mean, Maureen O'Brien didn't have a clue what was going on and never, never done an escape room had no idea what the idea was why would she she's an adult for crying yeah. out loud oh and there was lots of laughter generated from the audience oh i'm sure for all the wrong reasons and a lot of it was yeah the incredulity on um, peter purvis's face when emily cook's trying to explain the rules of um, what they've got to do and all this sort of stuff and oh bless them I well, just, it, it yeah, sounds yeah. to me embarrassing. I mean, these people are in the late 70s and in their 80s. They're being put into this stupid idea anyway and told, get out of it, just for the just for laughs. Sounds like cruelty in my eyes. I, mean, I hope they're paying them. I hope they're paying them big money to do that nonsense. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, and this is going on the collection box sets for our yeah. age groups. There are there are seven episodes. Oh, for um, so one for each of the seven incarnations of the doctor so uh so the various teams are related to um uh to to that sort of era of the show um i mean I, you've got people like uh sylvester mccoy's in there you've got peter davison for the fifth doctor matthew waterhouse i think is on the fourth doctor uh episode <laughs> look i just i don't this is the brainchild of Russell Minton, and oh, that says it all. Just Jordan saying to you, "Look at you, you're being polite." This sounds I'm awful. Trying re- I'm trying to be don't, really polite. Don't be. It sounds. I won't be for you. This sounds rubbish. And do we want it? No. Why have you thought of this, Mister Minton? Why? What possible kick did you get out of this? These are seventy and eighty year olds. Leave them be. Just yeah, put them on yeah. behind the sofa. That's all we need. You don't need to stick them in some sort. I mean, again, this is pandering to this mythical audience, isn't it? And they must think that all these kids go out to these escape rooms all the time, grow up. Or is it publicizing that failed escape room they actually had and needed to justify the money somehow? Un- utter nonsense. I think that's awful. It's yeah, certainly what so, something I look at on the collection well, box set. They, they've gone to the effort of bringing in someone who designs escape rooms. Oh, God, this is costing money. They've, uh, you know, they hired a studio for two or three days, set all this up, and got all, you know, all these actors and uh, and personalities in to do these escape rooms. And I just can't. And why go to the effort? Because a yeah, uh, watching people play games is not interesting. It's no. not exciting. It's not dull. If you've ever, you know. When I was younger and you'd go around someone's house and, you know, we'd all be playing on the PlayStation, but if they only had one controller, then you'd be sitting there and watching them play, you know, Grand Theft Auto or whatever it was. So you'd sit there and uh, it's not fun. It's it's dull and it's, yeah, 
this idea that people are going to be entertained by watching other people do escape rooms. It's just no. Why? Why have they spent the money, gone to the effort? I I think they're trying to um, come up with creative, regular features that they can do alongside the behind the sofa stuff, which is you know been reasonably successful on the collection yeah. sets. Well, the one of my favourites on the collection sets. I tend to go to those first before I go back to the episodes because I like to see what the actors are saying. You yeah. know, especially the ones that had nothing to do. I love seeing Colin Baker review a Tom Baker episode, for example, or a Peter looking at a Sylvester. You know, I, I love all that. I just think it's it's nice that they're sitting down like we do with a cup of tea and they're looking at it. And you can see them actually sometimes enjoying stuff. Yeah. But this uh, just sounds to me like something waste of money, waste of time, you bloody idiots. And that's, that. you know, as you say, that's really interesting because they come at it with, you know, a knowledge of how production was during their era for example, or, you know, how yeah. effects and storylines were achieved and, and, and they're comparing their experiences with what they're seeing on screen. You know, this is just getting John Leeson to strain his voice as the voice of K9. Again, just, oh, it, why? We don't, listen, we don't need, for the, for, for Minton and the team, we don't need anything new. We don't need anything this. Leave them alone. They're in the 70s and 80s for crying out loud. Just leave them alone. And stop putting them through these ridiculous things for money. And Just leave them be. When you've uh, so having watched the you know Moon Balloon film about uh, the the Graham Williams documentary, it was oh, yeah. wonderful, absolutely wonderful, and and I can't wait for people to see that and for that to get you know rightly praised to the hilt because it's superb. And then you've got stuff like this, which is just. Oh, uh, why? Childish. It's just juvenile nonsense. And they seem to think that they're, be again, it's pretentious nonsense. And they think to being clever. Oh, we've got to do a spin or something. But the, I'm going to say it again. They're 70s and then they're in their 80s. Leave them alone. They've earned the money. They're coming to see you. They're coming to watch the things. They're doing their interviews for you. They've, they've done countless things. They've done help with video launches. They've done the, the DVDs. They've done the Blu-rays now. Just leave them be. Don't be putting them in these stupid, childish situations. We've got some messages for you here as well. Uh, Garbage is saying, thanks for taking one for the team, Bedwia. <laughs> Pete yeah. is saying, hugs for Bedwia. Uh, <laughs> Paul is saying to us, this sounds better than Tales from the TARDIS. Big wink. <laughs> He's a, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> Doug is saying, big <laughs> love for Bedwia. I think he took one for the team and he's so diplomatic. He really is, isn't he? Gets on my wick sometimes. Um, <laughs> We've got Paul saying, put an episode of Doctor Who on from the last six years and see how fast they escape. They'll make a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> That's hello. brilliant. I'd like to say hello to another sci-fi guy. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. I have no interest in these escape room episodes. I'd rather that collection money go to restoration and optional updated effects for something like Invasion of the Dinosaurs. Oh, I'm going to give you a round of applause for that one. Yes, yeah. yes what a great idea. And Mr. Minton and your team. Ta-da! From one well, of our Who viewers, there you go. That's what you should be doing with the blooming money. Just Jordan is well, also saying, yeah, look, exactly. could have spent the money on the animations. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So so rather than spread your limited budget on guff like this, why don't just give the animating teams slightly more time to actually get a better product together and make it something that actually appeals to one of the two audiences, at least. But again, it's shown that they don't know their audience. We will buy the collection box sets in whether it be the limited edition or the standard format, or as I know with some people, both. Yes, we have heard on this channel of people who are buying both of them. You lucky, lucky people. Just please send me your details so I can marry you all. Um, you've obviously got money. But, you know, <laughs> but no, that's, you know, they don't know their audience. We're not interested in that. We want to see the actors that we meet at conventions and stuff. We we want to have the fun of them there. We want to we want to take the interviews. We want all the grown up stuff. We don't want to see all this reality television bullshit on it. Pardon my French, but we don't, do we? Neville is saying it's the worst type of television. It relies on embarrassment for its entertainment value. That's where I'm getting the reality stuff from because it does. And I don't want to see Peter or Colin or Maureen or Lou or Katie or anybody embarrassed. You know, I'm, I'm too invested in them. I don't want to see that. I don't want them put in a situation for kicks and for laughs. I certainly won't be watching this particular thing. It's a waste of money, BBC Studios. TARDIS Travels is saying it won't sit well with the collection Blu-rays. Uh, Peter's agreeing with another sci-fi guy there and said, well said. 
And yes, there's Lex to the Invasion of the Dinosaurs investments. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've got it all there. Uh, Timescales is also saying to us, updated effects are not covered by animation teams. We know that. We know that. But the money could be because it all comes from BBC Studios Timescales. It's all from the same source. So it could do. Uh, instead of put, instead of putting it into a blooming hiring the actors, which costs money, and putting them in an escape room, allocate it to another part of a different budget. Easy. Yeah, and I'm I'm all for you know getting Lou and and, and Peter Davison and and you know these actors to come come and do more interviews and and things like that. But let's have you know more documentaries on you know the music or other elements that we've not talked about as much. Yeah, because they than... cost money. Each documentary yeah. costs money. Yeah, so spend it on on that sort of thing rather than make them do silly crap for. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, for kids who probably won't even because I mean the problem with adults who think they're being hip and trendy is that usually the kids themselves will usually go. Ugh. Do you know what I mean? They just they just yeah, sure. they just get say no, we're not interested in that anyway. So stop pandering. Doug is saying that invasion of the dinosaurs. I would forgive everything for updated effects on one of my favourite stories because it was sport by glove puppets. We all want to see the CGI version now with what they can do, eh, with the dinosaurs. It would be truly terrifying. Uh, Paul, will there be escape room episodes re-released in years with behind the scenes, new effects and music? <laughs> Don't put it past them. And another sci-fi guy, the collection set seems an odd place for the escape room videos as the target audience that buy them probably don't care about escape rooms. I, I can also tell you that the target audience that buy them may not even know what an escape room is. This newfangled <laughs> yeah. thing. They've only been around for a few years in the UK. You know, the first time I saw one and it had to be explained what it was, I thought, and that's 45 quid to get in, please. There's a door over there. Use the fire escape. Yes, Kirsty, thank you very much. Oh, please hit the like button and subscribe. It pays for my therapy. <laughs> you, yeah. I know. I see what you mean now, says Time Scales. Invasion of the Dinosaurs is a prime candidate for updated effects. It really is. We are going off the bull here, but never mind. It's all part of the chat. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, look, Pete's saying to us, there was a lovely documentary, I think, by Toby um, Hadoki on Terence Dix done a while ago on a DVD. More pieces like that. There's so much more that can be done, especially, I totally agree, you know, David Whittaker, for example, you know, yeah. um, Ten Acre produced lovely book there um, 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 from Simon Guerrier, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, there was a David Whittaker documentary recently. That was really, uh, really yeah, insightful. Yeah, the qualities tying in with that sort of stuff. That's what we want. And um, then, you know, I was thinking about this, you know, the other day. The, you know, Strip for Action series or um, the I love them. Times series that were on the DVD range. I get that they're looking for, for other uh, <clears throat> ranges like that that can go across the Blu-rays. or and But escape rooms isn't it come on it's not it isn't it isn't well listen on that note thank you so much um You're so it, 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 this one's a mixed report isn't it really on on the celestial toy mug not for the bfi event itself as usual yeah. you're, you're clarifying the bfi event was superb and it was beautifully hosted yeah but the actual presentation of the celestial toy maker and we're going to show them again that is where the issues have started um not 100% from you then on this. I mean, I I enjoyed it. It was entertaining, but I, I just couldn't get on board with the animation and the creative style and the decisions that have been made. Um, I would recommend anyone to sort of watch the trailer and look at these stills and think, actually, I want to give this a go. And I would encourage people to give give it a go because if we don't buy it, they don't do any more. So but equally, if we don't buy it and they do a better version, then great. So it's a balancing act, really. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, I've seen that today where people saying if, they, if it doesn't get bought, they won't get made. I'm going to disagree with that, if I may. The BBC know that people will buy them. All we're asking is that they up the quality. Um, they also know from the uproar when it was sort of leaked that there weren't going to be any more, that they've got an audience there. So part of me is thinking, actually, that's why they're allowing all this creativity and all this 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 pandering and all this pretentious nonsense to go ahead because they know there's an audience. They're not put. If they didn't know there was an audience there, they would still want the money because it's still Doctor Who, mm. and there will be other ways in the future that they'll be looking at trying to exploit us for our hard-earned grotsits. Uh, we mentioned in the chat earlier, didn't we, guys? The AI stuff. That where's that going to go? 
you can guarantee if that's going anywhere, they'll jump on that bandwagon. I mean, I've, I've often joked, haven't I, Bedwia? It won't be long until we get holographic versions of our stories somehow. I think it will happen at some point. You know, you'll be able to watch it in some sort. I don't know. But Doctor Who is always going to be marketable, and I can guarantee you they're always going to look at ways to get it out there. I think there are ver some very excitable experiments going on right now with using the telesnaps that we do have, incorporating yes. AI into them, and finding ways of bringing those things to life. So we will inevitably have new versions of, of these yeah. releases which, which use that sort of technology, and that will be very exciting. And maybe that's what brings us closer to, you know, close representations of, of these stories. But, um, yeah, the animation is yeah. not... It's always going to be sellable. They've known this since the VHSs. Um, 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 we never even saw when the DVD started to come out the arrival of Blu-ray. And certainly the BBC didn't. They started with the experiments. Will they buy them again? They now know that as fans, we will. And when they can peddle off animations of this quality as well and have them for several releases now, they're not worried. Look at the success of the collection box sets, box sets in both limited edition and standard edition. Huge sellers. You know, they are, they are really pleased with that by all accounts. They love them. Doctor Who's going to be able to sell until we are all not here. That's when the problem comes in. And that's why the pandering to new ones, isn't it? To try and keep that longevity, to try and keep it going so that they will buy everything that comes. They're not going to. They're not as invested as we are. And silly little twerks and tweeps, in my opinion, to, to original episodes of proper Doctor Who is not going to help you. Things like the Daleks and colour and tweaks of these animations and making it all pretentious groovy i don't know it's not going to help that's just my opinion i'd like to say hello to craig light owler for joining us here there are these are, there are fans making youtube documentaries that would be way better content on collections the problem is not many of the fans get seen do they really um and it's a shame and and we know that now because as some of you have mentioned in this particular show there's some other versions of this particular story on the tube of who in animated form maybe you should um Go and have a look at those as well. It's up to you. It's all going to be there. Thank you, everybody, that's actually uh, given us comments about the show. Hope you, uh, you have enjoyed it. I, I'm, I, I'm really chuffed about that. Thank you again to Bedwia for coming on and giving us that little report from Saturday. You had a good day anyway, though, didn't you? I, I enjoyed myself. It was. It's always lovely to go up to the BFI and watch Doctor Who on a big, big screen and with an audience. You know, it's great. Yeah, brilliant. Um, to everybody that's joined us tonight, thank you so much. Please don't forget to like the video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We have got lots and lots of content coming out there. I'd like to say thank you to Garbage and Kirsty in the chat as well for making everybody so welcome and keeping everybody happy there. Uh, so thank you so much for that. From Bedouia and myself, we're going to leave you just now. Don't forget, we've got lots of stuff coming up on the channel for you. So do hit that bell to get notifications of when we are dropping another live show or indeed one of our recorded shows because chit chat's coming back very very soon so look out for those but we are, again mate thank you so much for for coming and telling us all about your adventures at the bfi what's the next one do you know uh, no 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 announcements yet uh Ooh. again we're still waiting for for both these releases so season yeah, that's true. Gonna come out <laughs> celestial toy maker's got to be finished and then they'll release that one um, yeah. So we'll see after that. Rumours persist about what the next collection box set will be. So let's uh, wait for that one. Yeah. And another reason to keep in tune with us here, because as soon as we know, guess where we'll be? Right here, having a good old gossip about it, hopefully with all of you. Until we see you next time on Who's Views, thanks so much for joining us. Look after yourselves. We'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.